What a beautiful day in Australia, a subtropical area. I'm so glad the weather is moist because as we know, we can't retain water, which sucks. Yeah, dude, totally. I'm so hungry. Maybe later we can walk over to the burrows using our unjointed and stubby legs to hunt for juicy spiders. I love when we eject our slime glue, trap our prey, then bite into them to inject our digestive saliva. Bro, same. Sounds good. I'm free later. And don't call your legs stubby. We're queens and should act like it. Did you know that a species of our kind, Uperi patoid rauli, is ruled over one dominant female? She eats first, then the other females, then the males. That is our power. You're right. We're goddesses, just like Megan. Yaddy, 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 yaddy. Whoa, who is that over there? Hmm, well, it looks like a worm of sorts because it seems to be bilaterally symmetrical and cylindrical-like, and they have legs, so it can't be an earthworm. It seems like they have a circular mouth, lips, and a large pair of jaws, so they must be one of us. Dude, they look so cute. Maybe we could sexually reproduce with them and make so many cute velvet worm babies. Totally. Wait, oh my gosh, isn't that our cousin? <laughs> What's up, broskies? Kyle, how have you been? You look tan and the papillae on your skin looks glowing. Thanks, cuz. I've been eating a new diet of only wood lice that I found in the house of a human who has actually been pretty happy recently since I kind of act like a terminator for his small pests. Dope, dude. I did that after I laid Jimmy's larva and he kept me up all night after he hatched. Gave me a really nice glow. Kyle, we were thinking of going to our grandma's house. Wanna come? Yeah, for sure. I know that our kind is rapidly disappearing, and I would hate to have my precious slime be used by a human for surgical glue like Deborah was. So best get out of the open air. I know. I heard that some of our species out of our 100 are critically endangered. Scary stuff. Crazy. Anyways, let's go. My sweet velvetons, my velvet cakes, how are you? Come in. I just made a fresh batch of wood lice. Grandma Gigi, how'd you know I was dieting on them? Oh, you know, Kyle. It's just that my central nervous system with the brain knows exactly what her little velvetums need. Grandma, we were talking earlier about how some of our cousins and relatives are about to go extinct. It's so sad. Yeah, Grandma. Is there any chance you could talk to us about our lineage? Of course. Velvet cakes. Nothing would make me happier. Come hither. Wow, that's a thick book. None unless you got buns, hon. Boy. All right, Grandma, show us our familia. Okay, honey, first things first. There are a lot of us velvet worms, and even we even moved back to ancient times. We haven't changed much in the last in the last 500 million years. It is hypothesized that we are transition groups between Annelina and Arthropoda. We haven't changed in 500 million years? Wow, so that means we are living fossils. Exactly. Me more than you, honey. Let's look at some photos. Here's Arthur Jenkinson, my mom's brother, cousin's brother. He's from the species Aeroparapatus, which means he has four or five Spanish spinous pads per leg. He recently died this year, but he lived a full life of six years. That's as old as we usually get. Do his spinous pads help him walk better? Yes, exactly, Kyle. Look at you, my little Albert Einstein. The spinous pads help him attach the surfaces better. Okay. Next is our cousin Amelia. Since she's a baby, we can talk about her developmental stages. Fun fact, we are protostomes, which means our mouth develops first in the embryonic stages. Uncle Gary is from the species Heteroparapatus. The difference between him and Arthur is that Uncle Gary only has fourth and fifth leg pairs with only four spinous pads. That means he has trouble walking, which is why you see him use a cane. Poor guy, he is always limping. He was named after a big cartoon, but he still thinks that they named the cartoon after him. What a narcissist. I know. Poor guy. Do you guys want to see more ancestors? Of course, Grandma. Okay, honey. Next up is Michael. Michael is my dad's brother, and he's an oroparapatus, which means his male genital opening is cross-shaped. Now, I wouldn't know, but that's what I've been told. Dude, that's awesome. I wish I was oroparapatus. Anyway... Here, let me show you some phylogenetic trees so you can see the relationship between us and other animals. First, we have the 16S phylogenetic tree, which is based on the ribosomal RNA sequencing of these species. We we'll use ribosomal RNA because our RNA is present in almost all animals. The next tree on the left is a distant relative phylogenetic tree, which was published in a study 
And the tree on the right is based on physical characteristics we chose as a group many years ago. Oh, I learned about this in Bio 111 at LMU. Our tree shows that based on physical characteristics, we are most related to squids and clams, which are part of the mollusca phylum. But this isn't necessarily true, because based on the published tree hypothesis, we fit in between Annelidia and the Anthropoda phylum. That's why the two trees look so different. There are so many different species of us that our physical characteristics vary and may cause discrepancies in the trees. Exactly. Sweet grandma, thanks for this. We gotta get going, dinner time. Hey, Cousin Lana, let's go make some velvet warm babies. Okay.